Okay, this will be probably video number one. I'm gonna try this once more to not be so awkward. But yeah. Anyways, this is gonna be more in depth on how to install siding. And the videos will probably be out of order. Right there we got uh, 118 and or 119 to the bottom of the J 118 and a half maybe a little shy on 118 and a half you see up there I got my tape inside the J channel so what we're doing is installing some board and batten siding and I'll show you a few tricks that I use in the field to Make sure I get a good job. These will be uh, this is more of a professional approach. So we got 118 and a quarter, maybe. Check this in three places. Then I'm going to cut it all with the saw. Going right up into the J channel there, make sure it's all the way in. And measure down to the bottom again. And it looks like it's maybe a little shy on 118 and a quarter. So 118 and a eighth. Uh, we'll say strong. Okay. So we're going from 118 and a half. 118 and an eighth strong. And this is board and batten. I already have my J channel installed at the bottom. I already have undersill, which the siding can slide into. It's already installed on both the corners. Soft and metal's already done, but I'll, I'll have another video for that. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to check the overall length of this wall. The reason why I'm doing this is so I can center the board and batten on it. So we've got 137 and a half. 137 and a half. What I'm doing now is finding the center point. I'll use my calculator. And hey, get out of there. Okay. 137 inch. One whoops. 137 inch and a half divided by two. We got 68 and three quarters. 68 and three quarters. That's the center point. So I'm gonna do is measure off this side here, and I'm gonna mark 68 and three quarters. I know that's my center. And just for sanity, I'm gonna check the other way. You see, we got 68 and three quarters again. Okay. Now, this is the center point of the wall, and the siding is eight inches increments. So, right there, we got 64. That's an increment of eight inches. Each piece of siding will cover eight inches. So, I'm going to go all the way over here and make my mark on the eight inch increment. I'll do the same thing over here, just to show you what's going on. Right there. Those are, the full pieces will reach all the way from that point to this point. Um, and then we'll have a little rip in here and then over here 
will have a little rip too. Now the only trick is, is this stuff has an inch and a half batten. And what we want to do is shift that center point over three quarters because that's half of an inch and a half. We'll shift it over three quarters. That way that inch and a half batten is directly in the center of this wall. So we're moving that piece over just a little bit and you'll see what I mean when I go to install it here. So once again, it's three quarters over. We're moving it back three quarters. And you can see that's where the batten's going to land now. The X represents the batten for some reason. But anyways, now what I'll do is show you what happens is we have four inches there to the inside corner. And now over here, we'll shift this three quarters just like we did over there. We mark our inch and a half now watch this four inches so now we're going to have an even reveal between the board the the batten and the edge of the wall or the corner post and the same thing over here we'll have four inches so everything's nice and even we're not starting with a full and ending with a weird piece over there all right now we already have our measurements we're going 118 and an eighth to 118 and a half. Um, I'm going to measure this out. 128, 128. Uh, that's 12 pieces, gets to 8 foot. And then I got 4 more to get to there. Uh, so that's 16 pieces. 16 full pieces and then I need a piece to end and a piece to start so I need 18 pieces starting at 18 118 and an eighth strong to 118 and a half so I'm going to get a scrap and write that down Here's a random piece of wood. We got 18 pieces from 118 and a half to 118 and an eighth strong. All right. I don't know if I already said this, but these videos will be longer in nature because you're not going to learn how to side a house in five minutes. If you think you're going to learn how to side a house in five minutes, you don't have proper respect for the trades. I've been doing this since I was 15 and I'm 38 years old now and I'm still learning things. So. Got our batten, board and batten siding here. I have my Tapco saw set up here. Or, well, the saw stand itself is a Tapco. Um, it's probably, I don't even know how old, probably 16 years old. Okay. What you don't want is you don't want the siding to be really flexed when you're trying to measure because your tape will be bent and you won't get an accurate measurement. What you want to do is get the siding nice and flat. And then you can go ahead and do your measuring. Come on. There we go. Okay. 
We've got 118 and a half. We got five pieces. We're going 18. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna not line these ends up. That way we get a consistent uh, shrinkage of the pieces here. You can see I kind of have them staggered there. I'm just going for a little bit. I don't want to make it all right at once. Okay, so there we go. Now you want to squeeze everything together when you slide it down. Make sure that it doesn't shift, that none of them shift on the other ones. Okay, now I'm going to mute this for a second when I make this cut. We got five pieces. And I'll put them right here. So I'm starting at the biggest measurement and I'm ending at the smallest measurement to uh, just so I can stack them and just grab right off the top. probably put some links in the description of a place you could probably buy the saw if you want to buy that. If you're just a weekend warrior and you're trying to side your house, it might not make a whole lot of sense to buy a $1,200 saw. Probably just end up renting something or snipping everything by hand. And this is a mess in here. So get me the 10. I haven't quite figured out the best way to stack this in the saw. But just kind of put it in there and however it goes. Okay, we had 118 and a half before, and we'll go to 118 and 3 eighths. And once again, First, I'll start by lining up the edges. 
now I'm going to kind of tap more on the bottom and get those things to taper a little bit. So the bottom ones will be shorter again. Once again, I'm squeezing this, carefully squeezing this. So none of them shift when I'm sliding it. And I'm gonna mute it again for a second. <laughs> that blade is actually a special blade designed for cutting vinyl siding. Um, the first time I've actually had one of those. I always use the plywood blade spun around backwards. Just a metal plywood blade. Uh, that blade, that blade right there works a lot better. It's uh, by Irwin. Okay, got eight more to go. And I'm probably going to shut it off for a second here because I think somebody's going to come down the driveway. I don't like recording when there's people around. Okay, I'm back and I got all my pieces cut. So now I'm going to show you how to start this stuff. We already established our layout. So what I'm going to do is we know we're four inches away. Is the is the clip part or this back side of that batten? We know is four inches away from there. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to add for this nailing fin. Got an inch and a quarter, and I'll go a little strong on an inch and a quarter. So I'm going to mark five and three eighths right there. I'm going to snap a line there. that nail doesn't go a little sideways on me because that can change things. Shock this line out five and three eighths all the way down. So I know where to put the, the leading edge of the piece. board and bat in our vertical siding. Um, there is a way to cut the up and down about in half, which I'll show you in a minute here. So it looks like to get in about tight to the back side of this undersill, it's about five and three eighths. We'll go five and a quarter, I'll give myself a little bit of room. Just make sure it's the same, top and bottom. So it should be the same. Because that's where I measured it. So yeah, we're at five and a quarter. You can see I got a little bit more room there, but it'll be alright. Okay. That was to the leading edge of the undersill. Or the lead, leading edge of the piece, sorry. So we've got five and a quarter. And 
end. Looks like on my speed square it's three and seven eighths. So I'll do it like that. Three and seven eighths. Just makes it a little quicker to do it this way. Rather than trying to chalk a line or something. go see we still got our five and a quarter there's measurements on here I don't know if you can really see them take out my snips and there you go now you can score this and snap it with a utility knife but I prefer to use snips um, utility knife can kind of wander tends to wander around on me, so I just got accustomed to snipping things. But if it's too close to an edge, then I'll have to knife it. Because it gets hard to snip like right here. So I'll just knife it out, and then you just bend it and snap it. So here, we could uh, put some crimps on this. This tool right here puts crimps. And what that does, it engages with the undersill and it locks in place like that. Um, but being that it's gonna be nailed, on the edge I don't really find that it's necessary to put those crimps in there for this piece it's not going to really accomplish much there we go we're in and what we want to do is get it all the way to the top okay and now we'll back it off just a little bit, about an eighth inch. Because they say most of the expansion in board and batten is downwards. So what I did there is now I just put a nail at the very top of the slot. And then now the siding can hang off of that and just expand downwards because all vinyl grows and shrinks with the hot and the cold weather. Another thing to note is you want to be careful when you're nailing because the nail is tapered on the end, which seems obvious. But if I put the nail all the way on that side of the slot, what's going to happen is it's going to pull the siding that way. And if you keep doing that, next thing you know, you're way off your line. So what I'm trying to do is center the nail, more or less, center the nail, pound it in nice and straight. And I can actually use the nail to redirect where the siding's going. It needs to go this way a little bit. I'll hug this side of the nail thin. It'll actually pull it that way a little bit for me. It's just little tricks, you know, these things, it's not that big of a thing, but it just makes your life a little easier if you're not fighting it all the time. If you're not fighting every step of the way. It's more enjoyable. All right, so there we go. We got one piece on. Got our leading piece on, and now you'll start to see what I'm talking about when I say you can cut your up and downs about in half. Now, a little trick that I came up with is right now. 
the piece is just resting on the bottom. So I'm going to nail to the top of the slot all the way down. And I can actually kind of move my nail a little bit to the left of the nailing fin. And what that's going to do is it's going to just pull on the piece a little tiny, tiny bit, not too much. But just to make sure that that lock stays engaged. Remember what I was saying about directing the piece in or out. If I nail to that side of the slot all the way down, what's going to happen is if I start up here and I go all the way down to the bottom, nailing on that side, having the nail tight here, what's going to happen is it's going to start pushing the piece. Each nail is going to push the piece that way. And by the time I get to the bottom, I may have pushed the bottom clip completely out. So we don't want to do that. So now what I'm going to do, my ladder set up, so I'm 8 inches away, more than 8 inches away, get my next piece ready to go, just laying it up there, and push this to the top, now you can see all my nails are centered in the slots, and I'm just going to let this nail be a little bit down. That way the piece will eventually just slide down and rest on top of that nail. Again, though, it's, it's near the top of that slot. Now the rest of the nails go centered and you don't pound them tight. If you pound them tight, you'll cause oil canning, which is when the siding bubbles. It'll bubble. It won't have room to grow, especially when it's cold out. So, what I'm doing is pull it tight there, tap it in, pull it in. It's not all the way in yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull on it and shift it up and down. I don't know if you could see that, but it slid into place when I did that. up to the top and let it settle down just a little bit and now I can nail this one all the way down so I'm just doing it a little different when I start from the bottom when I start from the top when I'm starting from the top I know that I know where the top is actually going to be. When I start from the bottom, I don't really know where the top is, so I just allow myself that adjustment when I get to the top of the ladder. So that one ended up a little tight. I'll back it up. You can see the siding can move up and down. And now my measurement is staying at 8 inches from the last one to this one. Manufacturer calls for this board and batten to be nailed every foot, which is more or less what I'm doing. I didn't want that nail that I dropped, anyways. Okay. Now we're down at the bottom, so we'll do this one the same way. But then and I'm going to hold pressure and slide up and down and you might have been able to see it shift over when the siding sliding freely that's a good test for that the lock is completely engaged um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about it's you can see the profile of those locks and how 
that has to engage like that all the way so it's locked in there completely. Okay, so it's locked in, it's resting at the bottom. Put my nail on the top of the slot and away I go. You can see this thing can still move. Nope. What's going on? <sighs> Something was a little bit locked in. If you put too many nails tight to one side of that nail saw, it can actually kind of lock it in, so you got to be careful about that. Once again, get my next piece ready to go. Slide this up to the top. And allow it to come down just a little bit. I'm leaving about an eighth inch to the top of the slot. So this siding can settle down. And you can see these nails are roughly 12 inches apart. A little over 10. I don't know. I'm not going to measure everyone. And you need this one's getting a little bit too tight it's decently warm out so I'm not too concerned that the siding is gonna grow and get locked in between the top and the bottom of the J um, you want a little bit probably a little bit more room than that uh, it'll be all right. And if it's not, you know, who's got to come back and fix it? This guy. So. But yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. It's like 70 degrees out. And New Hampshire doesn't get much warmer. Well, it gets maybe to 95. It'll also get to minus 20. Now what happens if I if I put a nail at the top of a slot down here? If I put a nail right there. The siding is going to have nowhere to go between the top and right here. And that will most likely cause it the oil can. Putting it in the J there, in the J here. This one's, yeah, got enough room to grow. And uh, I'll try to get a better angle on it this time. See, so I'm put pressure that way, and now it's good. All right, so I'm gonna shut this off until I get over there. I think you guys got the gist of it by now. Okay, I'm back. I almost got the wall down. I 
got two more pieces to go. I think one thing I might have forgot to mention is that it's a good idea to just check your overall measurement. Looks like I got 72 and an eighth or 64 and an eighth. These are multiples of eight. And you can see it grew a little bit. It's supposed to stay right on an eight inch increment, but that's okay. Um, another thing you want to check, I mean, you don't want it to grow a lot because then it's going to change your end reveal. Um, but anyways, what you want to do is check bottom, got 13 and an eighth, got about 13 and a 16th, and then at the top, I already checked out, that's 13 and an eighth as well. Um, and so, if you find that it's an uneven measurement, what you can do, and you got to be really careful about this, is you can actually adjust it just a little bit. You see how I can get that to move a little bit? You put a little bit of pressure back on it and put your nail to the side of the slot there. See, I'm starting to point like right against the edge. You gotta be really careful when you do that because what can happen is you can cause this to bubble out like that. Or if you go too bad, too far, then you'll push this right out of the right out of the clip. So you'd be very, very careful about that. Um, you can only maybe go a max of an eighth inch on a piece. And if you find that you got to get the top in or something, you can always pull. You can pull on it a little bit and do the opposite. Put the nail on that side of the that side of the slot. But you know, as this is all looking good, I can just nail it where it's at. And one thing I forgot to mention before is that when I'm nailing. If I notice that the nail is pulling on the piece that way or pushing on it that way, I'm actually making a minor adjustment with the way I'm swinging my hammer. I'm actually moving the nail a little bit in the plywood so that it's not either pulling or pushing on the siding. These are all little, you know, tricks that I've found out through the years. And there's a lot of ways to make mistakes with vinyl. You can see this moves freely. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but you want about a sixteenth of an inch from the back of the nail head to the siding. You need that little bit of wiggle room so the siding can move freely. Okay, there we go. Got it where I want it on the top. Put my nail at the top of the slot. On the very top hole. Nailing about one foot apart. Okay. That nail's a little bit tight, but it can move. It's good. Okay, now I want to make sure. Now we're cutting this next piece into the back of that undersill. You can see the back of the undersill is actually inside the corner. It's kind of hard to get a measurement on it. I guess I can get my tape in there. And we already know that this thing is consistent all the way down. So we got five and a half. I'll go five and three eighths on the whole piece. I'm gonna rip it out five and three eighths. Well, 
don't know if you can see that, but my tape does, my square does have measurements on it. Once again, I'll say that. You know, if I make my mark a little bit wrong, I just adjust my snip a little bit where I'm cutting it. It's not a big deal. And this has, um, excuse me, it has about, about a quarter inch of variance of tolerance inside that undersill. So it doesn't have to be a perfect cut. It's gotta be pretty close. But it doesn't have to be perfect. So now, I actually learned learned this trick from my brother-in-law, who, well, my ex-brother-in-law who worked for me. And like all new ideas, first I mocked it and then I accepted it and started to use it. So, not this. Um, I'll show you a second here. The little trick that he taught me. Come on, go in there. Kind of have to just work it in. There we go. And what you want to do? Make sure you're at eight inches. Eight inches, so that's looking good. And then I put my pencil nice and tight inside there and trace that inside edge of the undersill. What that's gonna do is that'll give me an exact spot to put my crimps. And I'll show you what the crimp is in a second here. It's all looking good. We got eight inches. And I'll mark that all the way down. And very carefully, I'm going to clip that. There we go. Now I don't want to put my crimp too close to that line. Otherwise I won't get the I won't get that little tab into the undersill. Now what this does is it gives you a kind of a positive lock on the siding so the siding can't back out back out of the corner. And so how it locks together is kind of like the undersill is like this and this little tab is like that. So it locks together like that. And that prevents this piece from being able to slide back out. I'm just gently, gently pushing that in. And you can see that some of those tabs aren't locking in right there. What I can do is actually fish my zip tool in there and I can roll that undersill back and that gets you can hear that little tick and that gets that thing to engage, gets that tab to engage. Okay.
and I'm pushing back, back on this as I'm pushing the siding in so that I'm not fighting that clip. You want that to be in tight, otherwise you'll be fighting, you'll be hitting those edges together. And it's not very clear what I'm saying, but maybe you'll get it. Okay, so there we go. My tabs are a little bit far. I can push on this, give a little bump with my hammer, the butt of my hammer. You don't want to go crazy doing this because you can start to pull that under so away and it won't look very good. I went a little further out, a little further, a little tighter with the clips than I wanted to go. But say so it looks pretty good. And yeah, now what I'm going to do, this might be outside of the manufacturer recommendation, is I'm actually going to put a nail at the top here, as close to that rib as I can get. just to hold this piece from, from settling down to the bottom and then being in the wrong place at the top. I made a little track on that with my zip tool. That gets rid of that, just a regular eraser. And there we go. We sided a whole wall. That's that.